This is your Tech News Briefing for Wednesday, September 14th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. On Tuesday, the Senate Judiciary Committee heard from the Twitter whistleblower Peter Zatko. Zatko became the company's head of security in 2020 after a high-profile hack, but was fired this past January. The company says it was for ineffective leadership and poor performance. Zatko says his termination came after he clashed with executives over his concerns the company was failing to protect users' data privacy. And now he's detailed those accusations to Congress. Because Twitter leadership is misleading the public, lawmakers, regulators, and even its own board of directors. What I discovered when I joined Twitter was that this enormously influential company was over a decade behind industry security standards. Twitter has dismissed Zatko's claims and said his whistleblower complaint is filled with inaccuracies. The accusations come, though, as Twitter is preparing to fight Elon Musk in court to force him to go through with his $44 billion purchase of the company. So what did we learn from the testimony about user privacy and Twitter's future? Joining us to discuss this is WSJ tech reporter Alexa Kors. Hi, Alexa. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. So, Alexa, let's jump into some of the testimony. Obviously, we know Twitter has a lot of data about its users. Why did Zadgo say this was such an issue? Yeah, well, I mean... Like a lot of social media platforms, Twitter is going to have, you know, information about its users. And Zacko's concern is that he says too many engineers at the company have too much access to all this data. And he's worried that with all that access, someone could potentially use it for, you know, nefarious purposes. Some of those nefarious purposes that he was talking about, he says there may be multiple foreign agents working at Twitter. I just want to play this clip from Zatko. He's responding to a question from Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley. I and many others had recognizing the state of the environment at Twitter. We're really thinking if you are not placing foreign agents inside Twitter because it's very difficult to detect them. It is very valuable to a foreign agent to be inside there. As a foreign intelligence company, you're most likely not doing your job. Where was he claiming these agents were coming from and what were they doing inside of Twitter? Right. Zacco says this is a big concern of his. And he says he spoke with other people about Twitter, about suspicions that foreign agents could be working there. Um, You know, he mentions one example, concern about a potential Chinese government agent. And actually, there's a previous case that we already knew about, where a former Twitter employee was convicted of spying for Saudi Arabia. So that's where these concerns are coming from. I want to play another moment from the hearing, because to me, this got to the scale of the problem. This is an exchange between Zatko and Senator Mike Lee of Utah, who starts by asking a question about one of the claims we've heard, that Twitter can't remove user data even if the user deletes their account. We'll hear from Senator Lee first. What do they mean by the, when they refer to the inability to delete data? What, why is that significant? If you don't know where your data is, as we talked about these large amounts of data, and somebody comes in and says, I've left the system, you know, uh, and maybe the FTC asks, well, you know, have you deleted all the user data? Um, You can't uh, respond in the affirmative because- Even if you've deleted the account. Correct, because you don't know where else this data lives in systems because you don't know what data you have and where it is. That's correct. So does this mean that Twitter is actually unable to delete data, or is it just unwilling? Um, It is unable because they do not know where it is, so they are unable to comply. This isn't the first time Twitter has been accused of mishandling data, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, Twitter is disputing this, but this is what we're hearing from the whistleblower. And, you know, we do know Twitter has gotten in hot water with federal regulators before, And even earlier this year, the FTC said Twitter had violated a previous agreement about how they should be handling users' information. And so Twitter said it would pay a $150 million penalty. So this was all definitely like a backdrop to the hearing yesterday and the concerns the whistleblower is raising. Has Twitter responded at all to this testimony? 
Yeah, Twitter has broadly denied these allegations, and on Tuesday, a company spokeswoman said the hearing only confirms that Mr. Zatko's allegations are full of inconsistencies and inaccuracies. The spokeswoman said Twitter's hiring process is independent of any foreign interference, and a company spokeswoman also said that the company manages access to data through measures including background checks, access controls, and monitoring systems. Do we expect to see somebody from Twitter testify before Congress next? So Senator Chuck Grassley said the committee had invited Twitter's CEO to speak, but that he rejected the invitation and said he wasn't able to speak while Twitter was still dealing with litigation with Elon Musk over a potential takeover. But the senator you know, said he wants to investigate this issue further and that this hearing is just a first step. So we'll see, you know, if they try to invite the CEO again. Senator Amy Klobuchar brought up some issues about privacy legislation that she's been working on, that other senators have been working on. Do we think this hearing, this whistleblower complaint will move the needle at all in terms of getting legislation passed? Yeah, we heard senators talking about wanting to pass new legislation. I thought it was really interesting when we heard Senator Lindsey Graham, a Republican, say he wanted to work with Democrats on some new regulation. Of course, it's hard to pass big legislation, so you know I can't predict um, what's next. But this is giving momentum to lawmakers who've been wanting to pass some new legislation around social media companies. This obviously isn't the only thing that Twitter is paying attention to. Its uh, shareholders approved the $44 billion takeover by Elon Musk, which they are fighting him over in court. How do we think the testimony and, you know, the whistleblower complaint at large is going to affect that case going forward? That's one of the big questions. You know, one difference is that um, Musk has really focused on his concerns about bots and spam, but that actually wasn't, you know, a focus of the senators. But we do know that Musk got permission to amend his complaint to include some of the whistleblower's claims. So we'll have to see how that plays out going forward. All right. That's our reporter, Alexa Kors. Thanks so much for joining us, Alexa. Thanks for having me. And that's it for today's tech news briefing. If you want more tech stories, check out our website, wsj.com. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. Thanks for listening.